Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of uh, Command Your Confidence. Today, I'm joined by uh, Mark's inspiration and the sophisticated man. How you guys doing today? Hey, what's up, Rob? I'm good. How's it going? Good. We're rocking and rolling. Just uh, glad to get back and doing YouTube again. It's been a while. You know, I've been busy with some stuff, but I'm finally making some time right to kick some ass. I got some great content coming up. So, yeah, keeping busy. And, and today, we just wanted to talk to you about, like, why women will take advantage of you. Because I think like a, a lot of guys are, you know, can be taken advantage of by women if they're not careful. Wouldn't you agree, guys? Yeah. 100%. They take advantage of, of men because they can. It's as simple as that, really. Because they can. Right. If, if you let them, I mean, I mean, I think we've all probably sometime or another been taken advantage of it if we don't learn from it. But when, when you talk about in that, these days, a man or a woman taking advantage of a man, it makes me think of a guy that uh, – he continues to give and to give and to give, but he's not getting any reciprocation from the woman. And I mm -hmm. see that it's blatant nowadays compared to when I was younger. A woman would not take anything from a man unless she was seriously interested or they were dating. And if she did, she was considered a 304. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. So <laughs> things have changed considerably. They actually get on there and online and brag about it now. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think most guys like fall into that trap though? Like why don't they realize or even when they do realize it, I think they still kind of, you know, they don't give a fuck. Is it like a self-esteem issue you think or? Oh, I, I believe so. Yeah. Because we teach people how to treat us. Yeah. I would agree with that. I, I'd say a lot of it has to do with low self-worth. And I think when you, when. We oh. lost you. We he lost you. Oh, he'll come back. We'll just get a bit. But no, like he was saying, like, yeah, a lot Place of so much value in other people and not enough on yourself. There we are. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. froze for a second. Do you want to repeat yourself? <laughs> yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. No, I was I was pretty much just saying, like, if you have low self-worth and you place a lot of value in, in other people and not enough on yourself, you're always going to be chasing that validation in other areas. So when a woman comes along and she's like, kind of messing with you you're going to be almost addicted to that because that gives you that hit of validation so you're always going to be like searching for it so that's at least what happened to me when i was uh in my dumb days if, if you want to say it that way yeah I think we've all been in our dumb days like no and that's true though like i, I I've, I've been there myself because you know it's like you, you fall into that trap when you seek validation from other people rather than just like looking within yourself, you, you're, you're craving that, you know, external stimuli and stuff. You're going to, you're going to just deal, you're going to be taken advantage of it because you need that validation to get you to keep on going. Mm. And if you don't, you're, you're just going to feel worthless because you don't know how to find that within yourself. And that's a lot of, I think a lot of guys have that problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, Corey Wayne had a really great, a really great quote that, kind of encapsulates this i think he says like you only people treat you the way that you basically uh how'd it go exactly people, people treat, only they treat you the way that you invite them to treat you essentially like something yeah. like what what mark was saying um you, like you don't you don't you don't project a certain way about yourself and expect oh well, why why didn't i get treated this way and that's mostly because you're probably you're showing that girl that hey it's okay to take advantage of me it's okay to treat me this way um so i, I think it starts there mm -hmm. well, i'll right. tell you what what's happened to me more often than not not so much of any girl taking advantage of me in the first is for myself in relationships and even in a couple of marriages i became complacent and then you kind of get uh, for lack of a better way to say it you get addicted to being with that person and then as time goes on, they keep giving less and less because you've kind of stopped leading as a man because, hey, you got it all wrapped up, right? You're married, with, you're doing your deal, you're working, you're doing what you're supposed to. And there's more to it than that. And then they start becoming uh, more distant, disrespectful, wanting more material stuff or money or whatever it happens to be from you, but giving you less and less of themselves. But I take full responsibility for that because – you're the leader or I was the leader in a relationship and I just got lazy basically. And so mm -hmm. then it got to where they were trying to get more something out of me uh, that I actually, I probably wasn't giving them the leadership. So they try to get material things like whether money or, or clothes or different things like that. 
and it becomes somewhat of a blatant disrespect, and it will escalate. I think King Dre or Affy or one of them has a deal about the 10 levels of disrespect, and that's exactly about how it goes. It can really get to where it can get bad enough to where they're pushing you in public or doing things. For example, uh, uh, who was it? Will Smith and uh, Jada. That, oh, that, yeah. that, that table talk thing. That didn't oh, yeah. just happen overnight. That started years mm -hmm. ago. For her to get there and talk, like, I mean, he needed to get up and walk out. Now, I've been in those situations, not to where it got that bad, but the disrespect starts and you got to draw the line. I, I ended up walking away is what happened with me, but um, it'll get to the point where they'll be pushing you in public or trying to start something with you. So mm -hmm. um, it all runs hand in hand, I think, with a man, as you said, Teal, with not, um, not, setting the boundaries at the first or leading from the start or not knowing your worth or knowing your worth and then becoming complacent and then them starting to take advantage of you because actually you're not giving them what they need from a leader. So they try to get something from you. At least that's mm -hmm. been my experience. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense. Do you think like a lot of guys are just like conditioned of like to like fall into that trap? You know what I'm saying? Of taking advantage of like, you know, they feel they got to, you know, do all this stuff for the girl and stuff and then like girls can women can realize well hey look we can take advantage of this guy and disrespect him you know well i think yeah, I, yeah. go ahead sure yeah I, I was just gonna say i think a lot of it is you can look at modern times i mean the fact that only fans and stuff like that is so popular it's like that's an industry that is like a hundred percent funded by men and it's like there's just so many dudes that are giving girls money for photos and videos and all this stuff for like little effort to, to little to no effort. And yeah. uh, that kind of culture, I think just, it makes guys think that, Oh shit, like this is what I got to do to, to get girls. But it's just, you're, you're basically being a simp at that point. So right. I think it's just, sure. it's just the way that the times are, I believe it's, it's making guys think that uh, the more that you give a girl this attention and this money and this validation all the time. And uh, it, it, it leads to just women thinking, hey, I could do whatever I want to these guys because they're simping to me. Right. Yeah, that's right. kind of sad what you're saying, though, because you're kind of like saying, the, you know, guys these days just don't like have confidence or don't have like, you know, self worth. And they got to just like, they, they feel that's like the only way they can do it. And they can't, they don't want to actually go out there and try. You know, yeah. That's sad. <laughs> it's very well, sad. I'm not to try on this stream, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it is sad. And go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say, I, I think this has been going on since the beginning of time. It's just so magnified yeah. and out there in the open now. And mm -hmm. the avenues are increased thousands right. of percentages, you know, For with sure. the worldwide um, Internet and ways we have to connect with each other. But, yeah, there's I don't think there's anything wrong with a man. Well, once again, since the beginning of time, a man has provided. Now it just happens to be money. And I don't think there's anything wrong with with uh, supporting a woman or if you're not married to her, if you guys have something going and she's giving to you also, because women have for eons look for men, you know, for look to men for support. So, right. but it's these guys that are just giving and giving and not getting anything. I've heard of uh, girls having, uh, having men's not the name, but they have Uber uh, foodie and different names like that on these guys that they know they can call and they'll <laughs> seriously and they'll take them out to yeah, That's you, crazy. You, yeah you, I got kids that are t six kids 21 and under so I, I know all the latest crap and <laughs> our, our Uber or whatever and they can call them they know they can get a ride or I have a daughter 15 and she can I, I discourage her from doing those types of things but there's been guys that send her money just for nothing I mean it's crazy. And and they delete. There's this one guy, I don't know who he is, but he sends her money. And as soon as he does, he deletes. So she can't really block the guy. And he comes in from different, I guess he, you know, yeah, it's amazing. Because I keep, I keep a close watch on her phone. She has no problem. If I ask her for her phone, she'll let us go through it. So I try to keep her from doing it. And I speak to her about the, I actually believe it's kind of degrading for women to do some of that stuff. So I discourage her from doing that, even though, we have who is the singer that talks about WAP? I mean, people that promote uh, that. Cardi B. Yeah, there you. That's it. I couldn't yeah. think of her name. We were speaking about her today. What's it called again? 
WAP, the what I, I don't know if we better say it on, but WAP is a <laughs> is an abbreviation for something W A P that she can use to get what she wants out of life. I think she has a song about it or something, but can you do it in the private chat so I can see. I can you type it out in the private chat so no one can see. I it? can't because I'm wrong. I can't do <laughs> oh, it. Okay. YouTube will come for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear some guys say things, and nobody says anything to them, but I, I try to be careful about what I say. I but anyway, I'll tell you after the show. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's, it's something between her legs she's describing. I, 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 I don't know if they have something to put that. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, so you got her and there's a lot of other women out there you'll see on YouTube that actually promote promiscuity and just, you know, and oh, yeah. uh, it's just amazing. They'll get on and talk about doing the basketball team or whatever. And, and yeah, very explicit. And these girls are famous and popular and, Anyway, I just try to explain to my daughter the disadvantages of idolizing these types of women. And in the end, you know, when you're in your 30s or 40s, how that's going to be. So Mm -hmm. all I can do is tell her, at least if she chooses to go the way I wouldn't want her to, at least she can't say I didn't know. And I think that's a father's job. But but back to the topic, she has guys that just, I mean, they just beg her to be disrespected, but she doesn't do that. But they just, there's so many weak young men out there that um i mean she could probably call up a half a dozen of them right now and say i want to go eat pizza and they'd take her there (laughs) even even if she told them you know i'm not really interested in you nothing other but a friend but these guys like we were talking they think they just think that maybe someday she's going to see how great they are and and ah, yeah you're Mm -hmm. a real good guy but it doesn't work that way the more you do for a woman when she's not reciprocating the more she disrespects you with actually disdain Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got I a, yeah go ahead i got a question though so you know so you're saying you got a lot of guys these days like who are just giving in the women doing buying them this and that but so what happens when a real man comes along and doesn't do any of that i'll let you answer that one yeah i mean i, I think like it's funny because uh girls make rules for guys that they can walk over but when a when a real man comes he's the exception so i think mm-hmm. like when you're a dude that is just is masculine he's on his purpose he's on his grind he he understands like himself what he wants uh a woman respects that and i think that this is kind of a point that it's funny that we're saying this it kind of i was alluding to this maybe a little bit earlier is like men should really look for respect in a relationship not not look for you know, the lovey dovey stuff. And like that stuff Mm -hmm. is cool when it's important. I'm not saying to, to never expect that or to want that, but uh, I think it's much more powerful, especially in these day in modern times that we live in for men to look for a woman that respects him Mm -hmm. and understands his mission, understands what he's doing, what he's building. And she wants to be a part of that. Uh, Cause if she respects you, you know, she's not going to be flaking on you. She's not going to be leaving you. She's, she's going to be, uh, uh, submissive to you so i think respect is is the most important thing mm-hmm. yeah i agree with that 100 we i was speaking about that with somebody or on on somebody else's show the other night that respect precedes love if you you can't yeah. have love without respect and respect is more important now we were talking about i call i call the uh, the u.s uh, we have an illusion that women don't need men here men have actually created that illusion because we've built systems and structures and uh, uh, safety nets, so to speak, where a woman actually feels like she doesn't need a man. But let these uh, systems collapse, and they would be looking for a man to directly help them. But here they don't need a man directly. They can get pregnant, go down to the local welfare office, get housing, and all these things. But now you go to other countries, and because I haven't dated here in the U.S. for several years, but it's a different thing now. A woman out there... What is the point in having a man if he can't help her financially because they don't have those systems and structures set up to where a woman can just make it fine without a man? So unless she has a man's direct help, a man is pretty well useless to her because she can get, she can get laid anywhere. So it's, a, it's just a different concept that people here in the U.S. don't understand because they've grown up in such, I'll say, such a paradise that they don't understand that that in a lot of 85% of the world is not like the United States. I mean, 70% of the world doesn't even use toilet paper because most of them don't have it. But everybody, it's true though. Everybody here mm-hmm. is so, so coddled that we, we get off on these tangents about things that 
you know, we're fighting about this gender thing or that thing or whatever. It's like, cause we got too much time on our hands. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the point is in other countries, we focus so much on, Oh, well, she just wants your money. But in other countries, if a man can't help his woman or support her, you know, this stuff about romantic love is, is really ridiculous or it's not even, it's, it's not useful. Mm -hmm. So we get caught up here. A lot of times, you know, guys will ask me, well, who should pay for the meal? It's like, this equality stuff. If you're taking her out, you pay for it. I mean, I've taken yeah. girls to the Caribbean islands. What am I? I'd like to go to the islands with you, but you're going to buy your own ticket. Mm -hmm. They're not going to buy their own ticket. And why? So I'm from the time where the men led and, but then women didn't take his advantage, but you have to be careful of course too, because there are women out there that just want you for your money, but there are women out there that want a man who can do something for him beyond the norm. I mean, I, I would rather my daughter marry someone, uh, let's say that she came home with a guy and he worked at McDonald's or she came home with a guy that uh, worked at Boeing, which uh, if you know what Boeing is, it's a, that airline company. Yeah. I would, okay. I would much rather be with that guy than, I mean, so we can't just throw out the financial aspect because it's very mm -hmm. important and the stability of a person it takes to be in a position like that as compared to McDonald's and Boeing. So it's important, but it's not all important. But it, mm -hmm. we got this idea of romantic love started, what, about 150 years ago. People started marrying for romance. But before that, it was always for support and logical, rational reasons. Mm -hmm. Right. No, and I find it, um, you know, so you know, very interesting, too. Like, I, I, you know, I tend to, like, when it comes to, like, not even, talk, you know, talking and socializing the type of growth that I want, I... I kind of look for stuff like I, I scream for all that stuff about, you know, money stuff. Because a lot of girls, you know, especially on the dating apps, too, like they just want, you know, they always are promoting their Instagram or their OnlyFans and stuff. They'll get a number and then they said, well, yeah, you know, cause I remember sometimes I go get a number and they're like, yeah. And then they give me a link to their OnlyFans and try to get me to join the OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I don't. And I learned just not, to, you know, I'm just like, I'm just learned to be like very direct and, you know, just be myself and just see whoever I, you know, you know, kind of who's vibe, whoever digs my vibe, like I can see myself hanging out with them. I'll hang out with them. But, you know, like, I think a lot of guys just don't fail the screen and they just put up with all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they'll just like, they, they don't have any standards. Like guys <clears throat> just don't have standards. There's, I think some guys are just so you know, desperate and they, they, they want sex that they'll pay these women. Like the women know that and like they can lead them on to believe they're going to get something and they'll fall into a trap, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're thirsty. I have a lot of girls cause I do online and I have a lot of girls on there that are, I, it's not daily, but several times a week they're saying, Oh, I'll give you sexy videos, hot photos and, or, or do a, a sex cam call. I said, look, I'm not mm -hmm. into that. And I'll say, and they tell me there's a lot of guys prefer that. So I guess that's a, a popular thing now too. Now, if I met the girl and I was going out with her for a long time, I'm not saying I wouldn't have a, with a, uh, a, a date on online like that. But other than that, it's just, to me, it's, it would be like going out and buying a, uh, I don't know if I can say that word or not. Let me see a sex worker. I think that's the proper politically correct term now. And that just doesn't interest me because there's no, once you pay, there's no challenge. So, but a lot of guys, like these girls have told me, a lot of guys prefer that. And I guess that's, uh, that yeah. keeps them uh, be safe from intimacy on their end. So they don't get, I don't know, maybe they feel in control. I'm not really sure. But those guys are the ones I think get taken advantage of quite a bit because they're so hungry, maybe not for the sex, but just for somebody to pay attention to them and mm -hmm. act like they like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know, and that's a good point. Like, you know, I didn't think about that, but, you know, a lot of guys, too, because they have a hard time getting out there and just socializing or meeting women that they want to pay for that attention. You know, probably some guys just don't give a damn. They're just like, okay, cool. I, I have the money. I might as well do it. Yeah. You know, like, you know, it's insane, but it's kind of sad, though, because they have the power within them to actually do all that stuff without having to use money to do that. They just got to put in the work and stuff. And we, I just, we, we just don't want to put in the work. Got to guys yeah. do that or they don't have the confidence in themselves to like want to go out there and deal with the frustration that it takes to become confident and good with women. They rather just, you know, just be lazy and just make it simple. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let me ask you guys this. Do you think that it might have something to do with, I don't know, I'm just guessing. Does it have something to do you think with kids 
I mean, like I got a 13 year old and he's, he's had a phone for years. So these kids and not young adults have an access to pornography things that I didn't even know existed that people did. So mm-hmm. it, is it, do you think it may be because they're so accustomed to gratification from, from a screen that like kind of Rob says, they don't have the confidence to go out and this is what they're used to and they're comfortable with it. So they, they settle for that instead of going out there and facing the fear of, of rejection from something in the flesh. So mm-hmm. what do you guys think? I think that might have something to do with the lack of uh, courage or, yeah, I, I think I, I think in my opinion and perspective, uh, and I say this a lot uh, on my channel, but it's just not sexy to be uh, or to have hard times to go through uh, things that build discipline, things that build responsibility. Everything's very instant gratification these days. And yeah. obviously technology has made it that way. Exactly. Um, but you know, you can use certain things to your advantage. So like, because everybody is so used to, Hey, instant sex, instant food, instant pleasure, instant comfort, be the guy who like actively pursues discomfort, who actively tries things that are hard, that are challenging. Because at the end of the day, man, like if you're a guy that's just addicted to comfort and addicted to pleasure, this is actually called effeminacy. You addicted to that pleasure you're never going to grow because you're, you're never going to become the man that you ultimately is like the best version of yourself right? because growth doesn't happen in comfort and pleasure. So it, it, even if it's just doing something small, like taking a cold shower once a day or, you know, going you for go. a walk outside or this is why the NoFap and semen retention communities are so big because that is a great discipline. I think for men to get started, if they're not used to doing hard stuff or having like some kind of, you know, restrain from pleasure. Right. But I think the the fastest way to, to grow as a man is to just get used to being uncomfortable. And I think I think it's, you're exactly right in what you're saying. We live in such a comfortable, uh, safe society that you have to pursue discomfort yeah. almost because we have yeah i take a cold shower every morning i'm telling you what that water's cold here <laughs> i did i did it when i lived in central america too but because that's all they had was cold water unless you had one of these little heaters on top but um mm-hmm. the widow makers but uh but it wasn't near as cold down there because the water doesn't run under the ground but yeah that's a good discipline because when i get up every morning i don't want to jump in there especially in the winter time right. but after you do it you always feel better and yeah we have such a it's like nobody even walks anywhere. I hear people complaining about the gas prices. Hey, if it was that bad, <laughs> park the car and walk. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but people don't want to. And like you said, that builds a character and, and discipline as a man. And you cannot accomplish anything without discipline. As you guys know here, what you're doing today, it takes discipline to get up and do this every day when sometimes you feel like nobody's watching and sometimes nobody is watching. Mm-hmm. But you do it over and over with consistency. And every day you do that, it builds a little more character and discipline. So when you finally do achieve some success, you don't become this arrogant asshole that nobody can stand because you realize it, you were, you were built up along the way to mm-hmm. to handle that through the the, the discipline of uh, consistency and this non uh, no immediate gratification. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys ever see that uh, that chart? I think this applies perfectly to what we're talking about. Is like hard times create strong men, strong men yeah. create good times, good times create weak men. And I think like that thing's cyclical because right now I think we're in great times. Everything's convenient. Yeah. It's very yeah. easy, but that's, you know, that's creating a lot of weak men. So right. you need that. You need challenge. Yeah, I think so too. We need adversity. Think mm-hmm. about this during, I think 2018 or 19, the suicide rate was the highest ever in the U.S., okay? Mm -hmm. It dropped during the pandemic. How can that be? You would think more people would be just, oh, God, I give up. I'm just going to kill myself. I'm going to run away. Can't say that either. I wasn't supposed to say that word. I wasn't supposed to say that word, too. You're going strikes on this because of the (laughs) God, you you can't can't even talk here. It's like, Jesus. But anyway, the point I'm making is this. But it actually dropped during the pandemic because – there was adversity. There was challenge, regardless of if you believe that it was real or not. People actually had 
adversity, you know, they're trying to figure out how they're going to make it. Maybe they lost their jobs. They were afraid. They had, they had a challenge. So it dropped during it. Makes perfect sense to me. We need adversity. We need challenges to feel, at least for men, to feel alive, to have fulfillment. Mm. Right. No, I agree. And like, like with all this stuff, you know, you know, this technology today and just making stuff easy, like it kind of cuts that out. <laughs> and a lot of people just don't want to do that. And yeah. they, like, like you said, they become comfortable and stuff because, because they have it easy. They don't have to get up and do anything like you can do the you, people. You can get your own food delivered to you these days. So you don't <laughs> have to go out to the store anymore. DoorDash. Yeah. Yeah. Legit. Like Instacart. Like you don't have to, <laughs> yeah. you know, you don't have to shop for yourself either. Yeah. And you could go broke too. <laughs> a lot of people probably go broke because you know they, mm. you know, they they're, they're kind of they, 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 even though they make money, they don't have enough. They're doing it so much that they're you know going way on their means. They're like, oh no, they're going to go broke. Yeah. You know, that, I think that causes people to go broke. So I said that mm-hmm. a, few, a million times here. I'm having like stuttering here. I don't know why, yeah. but um, no. And I like I said, like and I think and because of that, like we just don't want to go out there. And we just want to be lazy. We don't, we don't have to do anything. We have all this stuff that can help us just make life easier for us. I mean, in technology, you know, and not saying all it's bad. I mean, it becomes bad when you just becomes when you're constantly using that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Moderation and everything is important. Exactly. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Excess. I, I just to follow up on that. Excess in in anything like that can just lead to suffering and depression and anxiety. Um, that's the, that's why a lot of people go on uh and this is somewhat popular in the men's like improvement industry is going on a dopamine de- uh, detox so like literally like purposely you know limiting yourself on social media or uh even cutting out social media altogether for about 30 days or 60 days or whatever you choose um but th- those things are popular now because there's been so many great benefits to just removing dopamine from your life cuz you can get it from anywhere like food sex money uh yeah like we we named a whole bunch uh, a couple minutes ago but if you purposely if you purposely like kind of restrain yourself from that dopamine just for a little bit it could just be for a month or for a couple months uh, you'll notice that your energy levels are higher your focus is more locked in your your just levels of satisfaction are higher cuz then you actually you know what it's like to to work for something again you don't just get it right away Right. Mm-hmm. I think, like you said too, just working for it, like you were talking about earlier, is just what makes you become that you know man, and you know become more confident. Because like when you actually go out there and you go through the uh, the adversity and go through the trials and tribulations, and you conquer that, like you become stronger, and you realize to yourself as a guy, like you can go out to like do anything else that you want to. You you can't you. Uh, you know, achieve this one big task so you can go, you know, kick ass on this other task. Mm. Yeah, I think it's ironic that uh, we have made things so comfortable and easy that we have to work out because we don't work enough to actually to keep ourselves in any kind of physically physically fit condition. So what is it, 70 to 75 percent of the population in the U.S. here is obese or overweight. I think it's probably about 95% here where I live in the Midwest. It's just incredible. My <laughs> my son and I went to a uh, one of my other son's concerts at the uh, middle school. There was probably three to 500 people there. We did not see one woman that we would be interested in. I mean, because, yeah, I mean, it's incredible here. I just, I mean, I know it's different in different parts of the country. They say in Miami, out in California, it's better. But here in the Midwest, around St. Louis, it's challenging, I'm telling you. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's because people stay in indoors a lot during the winter time. That's what I because I'm from Michigan. And I heard that's like you know that, you know that's it that can be a cause of weight problems. It's like people just want to stay indoors because it's so cold outside. Well, they go from I mean, my kids I can see it. They're conditioned to go from air conditioning to or no from heating to air conditioning from air conditioning to heating. They don't have any. The schools are all air conditioned. There's no there's no challenge there. There's no we've just growing accustomed that's the way it's supposed to be oh you don't have air conditioning man how do you make it we made it just fine back when i was young. i mean i like air conditioning don't get me wrong we got it on downstairs i'm not but these kids and younger men can't hardly be out and work we have such a lack of um, you know, skilled uh, skilled tradesmen in the u.s and that's one reason we have so many 
um, Spanish people coming over the border because we got that's who does all the uh, yard work around uh, St. Louis. There are almost 99% of them are, are Spanish people from over the border, but they do the work. Those guys will get up and go to work at six in the morning, work till it gets dark. Mm. But they, you can't, yeah, you can't really find a gringo to do that. I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh, we have a bunch of contractors that are going, going in and updating all the apartments. They're here at like 5.30 in the morning. And, and they're like, can, can we work in your place at like, they, they knocked on, they came to me the day before. He's like, can we start early at like at 6.30 in your apartment? I'm like, no, come by at 7.15 <laughs> when I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> they're hard workers though, you know? Yeah, they're yeah. good workers. It's hard. It's just, it's just hard to find anybody who wants to do any physical work anymore. My boys, I've, I've taught them how to work, of course, because I work physical, which I, I enjoy. We talked, one of you guys said something about it earlier. When you work, it's just, people don't realize, if you ask most people, hey, if I give you $5,000 at the end of the week, you just sit home, or I give you $5,000 for working and providing service, which one will you take? Most people will take the 5000 for nothing, but I guarantee you they will not have the fulfillment they would have had had they taken the work and then got the five grand for it. And the heart mm-hmm. of the work, the more challenge, the more struggle, the more fulfillment. That's where they, they don't – most people don't understand that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's crazy about that too is what you just said. I don't know the exact statistics, but that kind of proves that, you know, people that win the lottery, right? But, you know, once they win it, they think, oh, my God, I'm rich. My, my problems are solved. I'm good to go. Yeah. But most people that win the lottery, if you look into it, end up going broke after like that first year or what it, yeah. you know, after a, a year or two. And people are like, why? They, you know, they got all this money. It's like that that solves everything. But the money itself doesn't really do it. It's like they still have that poor mindset or that that lack of work ethic that that would be needed to create that kind of money. So right. because they didn't have those skill sets beforehand or that mindset or belief before, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's going to go just as easily because you have that that belief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. they don't have to, yeah, they don't have the consciousness of a millionaire. What's right. the old saying? If you inherit a million dollars or if you win a million dollars, you better become a millionaire. Mm-hmm. That's what people don't understand. The more money you have, the more responsibility there is. That's what they don't, that's what right. they don't understand. You just, it's there's more, it's, if you can't take care of, let's just say $500 a week, you sure can't take care of 5,000 a week or mm-hmm. 5 million a year or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Like you said, they think their problems are going to be over. Money only magnifies what you are. Yeah. That's facts. Mm-hmm. Right. That's so true. Yeah. But if you have, like, I like what you say, because if you have the mindset, because mindset is everything. If you, I mean, you say you can win, have all that money, but if you have that mindset of being poor, you're going to end up poor again because you just don't know how to be responsible with money. Plus, you're going to be lazy too. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that, and that takes us back to what we started out with why these guys get taken advantage of because they have the mindset of somebody who has no value. Yeah. I hear people, I've talked to people, and, and listen to them talk about, well, I'm not good looking. I'm not this. I'm not that. But I'm sure you guys, like myself, have seen men that were lacking in the looks department, but yet they had game. They believed they were someone. Mm-hmm. And what people don't realize is you project out more how you feel about yourself than how you look. What you are speaks so loudly. I can't hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Who you are, what you present. If you walk, I tell people, when you walk in a room, walk in that room like you own the place, like you're somebody and thus you'll get treated that way. You walk mm-hmm. in there like you're a nobody with your head down and looking around like this, you're going to get treated like a nobody because you're acting like a nobody. It yeah. all comes from within yourself. The inner game is so important because you can put someone in a room with opportunities to create millions of dollars or to pick up the most beautiful women, but if he doesn't believe in himself that he has that capability, it, it won't matter what happens. He won't be able to get the women or the money. Mm-hmm. Right. No, that's I like I like what you said because like no, that's totally true. Like, because if you have that, if you see yourself as not valuable and not attractive, or you're not that guy who can have success, then I mean, you can try to fake it, but you're gonna, it's still gonna be when you go out there and the way you're acting and everything, people are gonna pick up on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Beyond like the phoniness, but when you actually do believe in yourself, and you believe that you can achieve it, you're gonna make it happen. And it's weird. I think it's gonna like. I think it's going to fruition into your life when you have that mindset about yourself. Um, yeah. Weird, weird thing was like it was weird because like um, 
you know, so I took some time off just to kind of focus on my web design business and everything this past few months. And I don't know, it was, I don't know what, what if it was a mindset thing or just because I, you know, kind of brought it into fruition, but at my I was just focusing on it and I, and I landed like three big clients, like in like a week, mm. which is weird. Now I'm like busy <laughs> and I'm, I'm actually challenging myself to do that workload on top of doing a full-time job and doing YouTube and everything. It's yeah. working good so far. Yeah. What is, like, what is Jim Rohn says? And I don't know it verbatim, but if you work harder on yourself than you do on your job, you'll never lack for money. Mm. And I find that to be true too. People think they got to get something out there, but when you, you need to become the person first insight in your consciousness before you can expect to see the results in the outer world. But most people think it's yep. the other way. If I just get that job, if I just get that house, if I get that girl, then I'm going to feel a certain way. You can feel however you want to right now, but if you actually feel and take on the characteristics of the person or that you want to become, then the opportunities will arise for you to take advantage of. And you will see more opportunities that were always there. And when you mm -hmm. take it back to women, these guys, once again, they're getting taken advantage of. They just believe that's who they are for whatever reasons. Yeah. They don't They don't have the masculinity. Yeah. They don't have the – how many guys walk up to a girl, and I've done this too, well, I wonder if she's going to like me instead of thinking, <laughs> I wonder if I'm going to like her. Mm -hmm. But what they, they have such a limited consciousness, and the reality is there's millions of beautiful women. And if you don't believe that, just get online and look around the world. But if you're only yeah. fishing – if I only fished here in my little pond – I would definitely be depressed. But I realize, and that's why I'm online, because there's girls all over the world, beautiful women, so and available women. And it's like we talked about the consciousness. I'm, I'll be 62 next month, right? Okay, I got kids 21 and under. And my daughter's girlfriends talk about how hot they think I am. Now, how can that be <laughs> considering, my, considering my age? But it's because I believe in myself. Now, three or four years ago, after a breakup, on a scale of one to 10, my self-esteem is probably about a minus two. Now, mm. nobody would have said that then. But the point I'm making is whether anybody else thinks I am or not, because I believe that I draw the people into my life that bear witness to the consciousness that I carry around. And the way, that's the way it works with anything. These guys are getting taken advantage of. They believe that's what they deserve. Maybe mm. not on a conscious level. <clears throat> if you ask them, they would say, oh, I deserve better than that. But really, right. they've been beaten down all their lives by teachers, their mom, or whoever, their dad. I mean, say maybe they grew up with things like I did, like, you're never going to amount to nothing. You don't have sense, sense enough to pound sand in a rat hole. All these things. But once you become an adult, it's up to you to do something about that. You consciously know this isn't true. Then you got to start looking within. And Is this really true? Am I that stupid? <laughs> well, of course you're not. But you've been programmed to believe that. And that's why I tell people, too, shut off the damn news. Why would you want somebody else's agenda into your mind? Shut the TV off. Why do you want their agenda into your mind? All day long, I listen to speakers, books, YouTube. I read. I meditate because I want to program myself. I want to believe in myself. And people just allow anything into their mind, the same mm -hmm. as they do really with fast food in the U.S. Eat dead garbage. That's just about as bad. <laughs> That's a whole other video there. Yeah, right. I, you know. yeah no, I, I can know. I can speak uh... – Real quick, Rob, I, I can speak on a, on an example, a real life example of that happening with, with me in, uh, you know, when I was like single and, and dating girls and stuff like that. And it, it's so true with what Mark is saying is that it all starts with your belief and your mindset in yourself. Uh, I remember the one time we went to this winery and I was with a group of guys. One, one was with my brother, uh, fairly successful guys, I guess you could say. Well, at least one of them was. And we were all hanging out together, dressed pr decently well. Um, and we just walked in and, and had a good time, drank some wine, met some people, talked around different people. And I remember distinctly there was at one point in the event where we were sitting down and it was like right next to this table with this girl who was uh, pretty, pretty decent, like good looking. She was, you know, she wasn't bad. And she was sitting right next to us. And I remember the, the kid next to me had a very bad belief system. Now, he didn't straight up tell me this. But just based on his conversations and, and the things that he talked about, I could just tell that's how he thinks about himself. He would always be like, oh, you guys are better looking than me. You guys get more girls than me. Like just very self-loathing and very negative. And he was trying to talk to this girl. 
And within two seconds, she's looking at him, doesn't really pay him much attention. I'm uh, mind you, I'm sitting next to him, not saying a fucking word. I'm just sitting there and she looks over at me and like her whole fucking attitude changes. She's like, start smiling. She's trying to talk to me. I'm not even engaging in her. I'm just like minding my own business. And then like 10 seconds later, she totally ignores him. I'm not making this up. She like leaves the table, comes back to check her phone right before her friends left, comes over, sits on my lap and whispers in my ear. You can fuck me if you want to. And I was like, I don't even know your name. What's your what's your first name? Like, could we start there? So I I was just not even like paying attention, but because I was just super confident in who I was and I just, you know, I had that belief in myself that like I'm a high value guy. Now, I don't I'm not like overtly telling people this. That's just the belief that I held. She was responding to me and not to this other guy. So right. it just kind of shows you that that like that stuff does work, not just with women, but, you know, we were saying like with success and with influence, with impact and money as well. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah, that's. I don't believe you can communicate with a woman overtly, just like yeah. you communicated to her covertly or without saying anything mm -hmm. by your actions or inactions or who you were. And that's so important. And I've seen that happen before myself, though, mm -hmm. in my own case and with other people too. Both sides of that the 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 guy who you really look, he, he's a good looking man, but yet he doesn't have anything on the inside. And really, yeah. women women are attracted to looks. But that will get your foot in the door. But after that, that's it. Because mm -hmm. they're more attracted to inner strength, what they're like. So even a guy who's not attractive, he may struggle to get his foot in the door. But if he can get a conversation going, if he feels good about himself, mm -hmm. you know, he can get, get along better than a guy who's attractive that doesn't have any inner game or feels like he's not anybody or a thing. So I wonder if she's going to like me or I hope she likes me. Because women can smell that approval seeking Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a um, really good point you guys brought up there. No, it's like you got to have the right attitude and stuff because that you know I think when you do have the right attitude, like like I said, it does you project that and and it, like when you feel good about yourself and you feel confident, and you feel like you're this person, like you're going to create this reality for yourself that you want. But if you have a bad belief about you know bad mindset and negative beliefs about a lot of things you're going to create that in your life too just based off the way you view things right mm -hmm. well it's like opportunities the opportunities to be successful or, or in finances or with women they're always out there but the person who doesn't who doesn't believe in himself he doesn't see the opportunities we have what they call lacunas they're like blocks i don't know if you guys have ever been looking for your keys or something you misplaced you're looking and looking, then your wife or your friend or girlfriend comes in and says, they're right there on the table. And you just, you just look there, but you didn't see them mm. because you believed they were lost. So I, they were actually obscured from your view. They mm. were right in front of you. You know you looked there, but yet it wasn't there. <laughs> but it was there. You couldn't see it. So you block that out. So it's the same way with a guy who doesn't believe in himself when it comes to women. A woman could be overtly flirting with him, but because of his lack of self-esteem, lack of belief in himself, he doesn't see it. He doesn't notice it. It just goes right over his head. Mm -hmm. and somebody can even tell him, look, that girl likes you. I don't think so. <laughs> he, you know, was yep. she looking at you? Yeah, I know. I, I think she doesn't like me. I mean, so he sees what he believes. We don't, how does mm. it go? We don't believe. Yep. We don't, we don't see what we believe. We believe, no, we don't believe what we see. We see what we believe. Mm. That's fact. And that, yeah, and that blinds us. I, I think, you know, and that's one thing I think we all got to be aware of that we do have that power. And I think we're, we're like I said, we're blinded all the time just by our, you know the way we're brought up and stuff. And you know, it's just like you know, just having that self awareness and everything, and kind of dealing when you know having the discipline to like uh, deal with those beliefs, negative beliefs and stuff when that cup arises. And it's just something that takes time but if you're willing to go through the process and just kind of work on reprogramming the way you believe about things like you're just going to just have this kick-ass confident mindset and you'll be able to, to achieve whatever it is you want because you will be infallible because you got that confidence and you have that belief and that's not you know when you face obstacles in the real world that's not going to stop you yeah, the, the only problem is most people want to watch TV. They want to take the ease. They don't want to take the time. And it's kind of scary. I've done some exercises where I kind of had to regress back in my past. And when I started, 
yeah, it was, yeah, I didn't want to do it. I mm-hmm. constantly, but I did it and I went and I felt some emotions, things, things that happened when I was a kid. Um, and it helped me, but a lot of those emotions and those things that we feel like we feel like we're not worthy, they come from way back when we didn't have a choice. You know, it was our parents are like gods to us because mm-hmm. without them, we'll die, or at least we think we will. So, whatever they say to us, they're the authority figures. Any negative thing, well, I must not be any good, they, or whatever. They don't even have to say it. I grew up feeling like I wasn't loved, but looking back now, consciously, I realized I was loved. They just never said it and didn't know how to hug. I, I never see any of that. So it was very difficult for me when I started being around people that would say they love, I love you, or they would want to hug you. Very mm-hmm. uncomfortable for me because and I would think, how could you love me? You don't even know me. But they were talking about loving a person in a way that if you needed my help, I would help you. Not so much the romantic in love type thing. But I was that was all unfamiliar for me, and I had to get used to that. But if a person grows up with that, he thinks that's that's his view of the world. But once you're an adult, you have a choice. You can change that. You can you can write your story however you want to. But it takes consistency and persistence because that's how you became the person you were that you maybe you don't like. For through years, day in, day out of this programming, either from your parents or even from yourself. What people say to themselves when they're angry, they talk to themselves in a way that they would never talk to their best friend. Ah, I can't believe you I did that again. Man, I can't, you know, they talk like I say, would you talk to your best friend the way you talk to yourself when you make a mistake? Of course they wouldn't. You need to become your own best friend, your own uh, uh, cheering section. Mm-hmm. Yep. What do you think is like, you know, the biggest challenge though with changing your belief system? Because like there are some challenges you face along the way. What do you, from your experience, I know you guys have worked on yourself and you're probably still working on, you know, growing your beliefs, but like, what do you think that some of the challenges are for guys who are just wanting to work on that? Mm. Mm. Answer that one or? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, oh, oh, you run, go, Rob? Oh, I know. I think you guys can answer, like whoever. Yeah. I was giving it, I was giving it to you, so. Okay. Yeah, I was, I, I think for me, um, in my own experience, I know that I can be my own worst enemy, so a lot of the times I'll work on myself and and be really, really good in something and and make a lot of progress. But sometimes I have the ability or sometimes I have the, I guess the, uh, I guess what's the word I'm looking for? The, the negative mindset of not looking at those incremental steps that I did take and not looking at the positives. I only look at the negatives. Uh, so I'm very hard on myself. Um, I could be very, perfectionist at at a lot of times making sure that everything has to be in line until i take action but really you just got to go and and you figure it out on the way that's that's what i've had to learn um so for me i just get in my way a lot and i uh i doubt myself and kind of second guess the things that i do so i I think a lot of you know you guys can speak for yourselves too but i think a lot of men struggle with the fact that they just doubt themselves and they think that they're just not good enough and and their own mind actually defeats them instead of empowering them mm-hmm. yeah no, you know, i'd have I to agree. agree with you on that too because like you know being on this journey like i kind of felt fall back into my old habits sometimes too you know i find them to self doubt and st- stuff and i and i i had to like you know tell myself i got to think of all the successes that i've had just to kind of keep me in check uh but yeah, that, that that's like the, just dealing with like, you, you, know, you know, your past mindsets and stuff. Because just when you think you've gotten rid of them or just when you think things are going well in life, you know, that like shit hits the fan. And, 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 you know, sometimes you kind of revert back into those ways of thinking. And, you know, from, and, you know sometimes you just have to tell yourself, have discipline, be like, hey, man, you, like you could do it. You'll deal with it. And it's, it's so stupid. But, you know, but that I think. It comes and goes, and I think you're, you know, that, that's always going to happen. But I think you just got to have that discipline and that awareness to like deal with that when that comes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just got to keep pressing on and get up and try one more time. The only way, the only failure there is in life is is if you stop or if you give up. I had somebody right. tell I've been married four times. I had somebody tell me, "Well, you've had four failed marriages. You know, you don't know anything about relationships." I look at that differently. I had a lot of successful years during those marriages, so I did learn a lot. And ask any successful man who's been successful in any, he will tell you that he learned more from his failures than from his successes. We are taught 
from a very, very early age that it's bad to fail. What yeah. happens if you get an F on your report card? You're afraid to take it home. You're ashamed. They teach you it's bad. It's not bad at all. Exactly the opposite is true. If you're not failing, you're not trying. I mean, yep. I've failed so many, so many things in my life. I mean, just I, I couldn't keep track of the failures. But back to what I think Rob said, I'm sure which one of you guys said, we need to focus on our successes because whatever you, it's a psychological principle, whatever you focus on grows in your experience, in your experience. Mm -hmm. So when you fail or when you, if you want to use that word, when you fail, you need to look at it and see what can I learn from this? And if nothing else, if you never see how that benefits you, it does benefit you in character strength because you come back from the discouragement, the, the disenchantment, the, the downtime, and you come back stronger. I remember one time I was boxing. I fought this guy in the prison. We were going to the prison to fight. And I'd won up there a couple of times. And I fought this guy and he just beat the shit out of me. Knocked me down two or three times. I kept going back to the corner hoping he would stop the fight. And he kept saying, you can take him. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I made it through the three rounds. And I mean, the whole weekend I was punched. I had cuts all over my forehead and bumps. And I thought, man, he just yeah. took the stuffing out of his glove. Now, I didn't quit. But what I did do is I thought, man, I lost confidence in that coach. He was a great guy, but he came from the old school back in the 20s fighting. And uh, anyway, so I thought the guy must have taken the stuffing out of his gloves. Well, years later, I went up and talked to my old coach. He was 99. He said, if I make it to March 3rd or something, I'll be 100. I said, you remember the time I fought that guy in prison? He beat the shit out of me. He said, yeah, I went over and checked his gloves, and he had a half a horseshoe in each one of them. I said, why, <laughs> didn't, why didn't you say anything? Well, at that time, they were having riots at the prison. He was afraid to say anything. But it made perfect sense because I had cuts on my forehead. You don't get and bumps. But anyway, the point here is is I didn't quit. I looked, I went, started going to St. Louis. I got a different coach, and it really helped me out anyway. So I, I, I learned from that failure that maybe I needed to go to a different coach, and, and I did very well after that. So – you have to look for the good in every failure, no matter what it is, because it's there. But it's so easy to look at the negative and focus on the negative. And we're almost taught that in society. Look at the news, for example, and throughout life. Stand in a line and start bringing up negatives about how long you're standing there, what's wrong with them. You'll get a conversation going. Stand in that same line. Talk about how great your life is, how wonderful things are. People will start backing away from you. They'll think <laughs> you're weird. Yeah. Right. That's very good. Well said. True. So any you like want to give your final thoughts here? We're reaching the hour mark here. We got about eight minutes uh, left. Um, Tino, how do you want to, any conclusions for the show or? Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess as a final word, you know, I think we all brought up really great points. And uh, the biggest thing that I would say is really just to focus on, uh, making yourself better and, and understanding that it's really all in your control. You know, as, as long as you focus on your improvement, learning from your mistakes, like Mark was just saying, learning from your failures and, and, and being willing to fail. I think a lot of guys, you know, we get scared to, to just take that step because we think well, people are going to judge us. People are going to make fun of us. They're going to reject us in some way. But those things are just a, a they're, they're a catalyst to the successes that you eventually will have. So don't run away from them, run towards them um, and understand that it's all it's all your own journey. You don't got to compare yourself to anybody else. Mm -hmm. Mark. OK, my I believe that it all begins within and you can change yourself, but it takes some effort. Affirmations are great. Visualization, visualizing yourself. Every day, maybe for five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, day in, day out, as the person doing the things that you want to do, the successful person you want to become, look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself how great you are. I tell people better to err on the side of arrogance than on the, on the side of debasing humility. I mean, the world's going to beat you down. You need to be lifting yourself up, and you can do that. Think about what you're thinking about. What is your internal dialogue all day? They say most people don't think. They just repeat the same thoughts they had 70 or 70 or 80 percent, or no, 70 percent of the same thing they thought yesterday. Something like that. I'm not sure the, the numbers, but the point is they don't change their thinking, thus their actions never change. You can change your thinking, but as with going to the gym, it's not going to happen overnight. 
People say affirmations don't work. They try it for a week or two and they give up. You became the person you are through years of outside programming or affirmations, if you like. You're not going to change yourself overnight. It takes time and discipline. It all comes down to how bad do you want it. Look yourself in the mirror, as I said, and tell you tell yourself who you are as if you are who you want to be as if you already are that person. These things work if you use them consistently. If you do them long enough, eventually you will start seeing the world will bear witness to your affirmations. It really is like magic, but it's not magic at all. You're mm -hmm. telling yourself what you want to be. Read. Get, put some new information in you so you have some different thoughts. Read about successful people. Read books that help you. Listen to people. Uh, you, know, you become part of what you're around. Uh, if you're around five millionaires, you'll probably be the sixth. If you're around five losers, you'll probably be the sixth loser. So there you go. It's really up to you. You have the power in you to be whatever you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really well said, guys. And yeah, my final thought would be like, yeah, change does, I agree, change does not happen overnight. Uh, you know, path towards success and just changing your mindset, it takes time and it takes discipline and just takes persistence and everything. And thing, you know, you just got to deal with whatever happens your way. And you got to actually put the time and do the work to, you know, create the life that you want, change your mindset. But if you just sit around and just like do nothing about that, then you're just going to get nowhere and everything. So you got to take that into consideration. And the whole thing, getting back to the main topic about like, you know, being you know, taken advantage, if you're allowing someone to, you know, you, I think in order to avoid that, if you're currently in a situation you got to learn to seek validation within yourself instead of women. Cause like, that's not the end game. Like you're most important. You're the, the one who's going to create the life that you want for yourself. And you got to believe that you can do that. And if you can, if you grow that belief, the stronger it will become and the stronger that will uh, fruition in reality. So definitely go towards your goals. Just don't give up. Don't give in to like, you know, the external factors that may be holding you back and continue to face those challenges as they uh, come about. But if you continue on doing that and kicking ass, like you're going to get there eventually and have the life that you want. So, but yeah, guys, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, Tino, where, where can they find you at? Yeah, if you guys want to search up just uh, my brand name, The Sophisticated Man on YouTube, uh, I'll come up. Instagram, same thing, or just search my name, Tino, and I should pop up. Okay, thank you. And Mark, how about you? You can check me out on Instagram at Mark's Inspiration or on YouTube at Mark Daniels, Mark's Inspiration. I have a couple books published on Amazon, Coming Back Home, The True Adventure of Mark Daniels, and the second, The Power is Within. So mm -hmm. check those out, and oh, that's cool. it. Awesome. Yeah. And then you can uh, check out uh, my, uh, you can check me out at command confidence on uh, Instagram. You can also go to my website, command your confidence, I have some books and you know, some coaching available on the website. And again, guys, thank you very much for coming on and look forward to doing a show with you guys again. It was a really great discussion we had there. We gave some killer bullet points that can just help guys like succeed in life. 100%. Yeah. My pleasure.